What's up guys, welcome back to another video. For those who are new, my name is James. I'm a software developer that's been making apps for a few years now. And typically I take you guys through one of my apps in these videos. This one's about Finch, my AI finance app. I figured I'm about to do a good working session, so I might as well take you guys along. So today what I'm gonna be doing is connecting the front end to the actual data from the back end. We have some mock transactions coming from Plaid, so it won't be like, real bank data, but it's Plaid sandbox environment. So it's as real as it'll be. So I wanna get that working. And then after that, we'll push out a test version so that my co-founder and I can actually start using the app to see if it helps. The other thing I wanna to do today is get the savings slider built out. So that way the user can slide and add a savings goal and remove savings goals. So not a huge day, but you know, it'll be fun. So first I'm gonna tackle the linking up to the real data. The problem that I think I'm gonna have is I have my, my schema for what I thought the classes would look like and I just need to make sure that, you know, my from JSON methods will actually, you know, convert data from a map which we get back from, you know, the API to the actual classes to be used in the app. So. Just gonna be making sure the fields map up properly and all that. So, again, this is the new design where we're gonna have a save to spend and then all of the spending categories. And this is what I'm gonna be getting. This is the data I'm gonna be getting from the API. We're gonna be using the Plaid Sandbox data. And this is the structure for the model. So again, I'm using clean architecture. So first we have, our, we have our data models, right? And this is what we're expecting from the API. It will have an ID, a name, a balance for the category, transactions, and then the category, which I've made an enum. And then later on, we'll change that to a domain entity, which is pretty much the same thing. In clean, the data models are what we get back from the database or API, and then the, the domain entities are pretty much the data model, but just has the fields that we need on the front end. And that's what I'm gonna to try to do right now. Okay, so I've gotten pretty close. I mapped over the, the data that comes back here in results. See, I'm getting my categories here, and it's a map. And then I created my pay period categories here. But the category seems to convert properly. And the number of transactions seems to convert, but the transactions themselves are all null. So I need to see what's going on with that. When I'm looking at the data here that comes back from the database, again, this is like that plaid sandbox. So I don't really know what it's gonna show. It just shows different fields than what I'm expecting. So 
I guess we'll, I guess we'll see. Cool. So I added the new fields to the transaction class. I didn't delete my old ones because I think we're gonna need those soon because those were what Plaid had. And then I guess my co-founder, he was just returning the data that we were using on the UI, but it was still missing some stuff. Like it was missing the account, the bank account, like it came from the account name, the color, the logo. Plaid has that data. So I asked him to update that. For now, I'll just, you know, since it's mock data anyways, I'll just use some fake data. But it's deserializing fine. So now what I'm gonna do is remove my my fake. I was initially I had like a fake array. So I'm gonna remove that and replace it with the real data and see what gets broken. I'm assuming because of the new fields that I added that those aren't gonna map correctly. So I just need to update some stuff and I think we'll be good. So I've finally deserialized all the data properly. This number is something that I actually forgot isn't coming from the back end. I need to calculate this with my categories. And then these numbers are, you know, they're fake, so they don't add up properly, but the transactions don't map properly like I thought. I see it's all empty, this is empty. What's nice is that it's not crashing. So we'll see if I can fix the rest of this. So that was quick. It maps up pretty good. And it shows all the, the stuff, which is nice. But it's still broken here. So this is what's next. Cool. That was actually easier than I thought. It was already pretty much built out. I just had to swap the fields. So this is going pretty good. I'm actually happy with it. Now I just need to figure out this safe to spend number why it's showing this because I see here that the percentage seems to be already there so I just need to figure out where this value is coming from that was quick also turns out the value is hard-coded so I just need to figure out where I'm getting this guy from Oop, focus this guy from and then just make it update that field so we're looking pretty good this doesn't look right. Sometimes in programming, a quick little bracket can change everything. And we are good. This number is clearly wrong because that looks like the spending one, but at least I'm getting somewhere. 
Cool. So, numbers showing up now, which is good. Obviously, this data is effed because negative 213 saved to spend, and we're in like the second day of the pay period. So, we'll have to figure out how Plaid is doing the mock, or maybe we'll just use our real data. That way, we can tell for real. But either way, it's coming from the back end and it's getting deserialized, and we can actually use it on the UI. So it's pretty much a win for tonight. It's later than I thought. I thought that would go faster. Um, some parts went fast, like mapping it to the UI, but the deserializing kind of took a little bit longer than I thought. So I might try to get a start on the new design for the savings goal, but I don't think I'll finish it tonight. So it's okay. And for those of you that don't remember, like what the savings goal piece looks like. It's right here. And what you can see is you have a slider <coughs> and, and then you can just easily change your savings goal by dragging. You don't have to type in a number or anything like that. You can just drag. And then when you drag, it'll automatically subtract from your safe to spend. That's not moving any actual money around. That's just letting the user set a goal so that way they don't spend the money that they wanted to save. But the saving part, like moving into the account, is actually on the user through however they would do that, whether it's cash or whatever. Cool, so night went pretty well. I got a lot done. I think I'm missing, this seems weird. Oh, I just realized I don't have the savings goal showing up here. That's why it looks different than the chart, but it's really close to the design. I got the savings goal here. I realized in our initial design, we had the main goal set for the safe to spend, and that didn't really make sense. Your savings goal should be a portion of your income, not your remaining balance, because the remaining balance will change. So that, I, I found that bug kind of, and I fixed that. So as you see, you can slide it. It doesn't subtract from this. This number is all f but whatever. We'll get there. Um, and then like these transactions show up, boom, these are good. One of the things I want to work on next is allowing the user to actually change their category that it's in, just in case we get it wrong. But Overall, a good night. I just need to clean up some stuff. And yeah, this app is coming along. I'm hoping that next week we can actually use the app and use the data. So we'll see what happens with that. I want to, you know, use it more to see if it's actually helpful. But if you guys are interested in this, I put the link for the beta. Please sign up. Let me know what features are important to you. And, you know, like, subscribe, hit the bell. I want to put more videos out. I want to get better at making these videos. So yeah, follow along. Also, let me know what type of videos you guys want to see. Do you like these type of more ones where I'm working and coding at the same time? Or do you like the ones where I, you know, do all the work and then just sit down and talk about it? You know, do you want more day in the life stuff again? Let me know. I'm flexible and I want to, you know, make stuff that you guys like watching. So. Peace.